Welcome to QDL. QDL is your look at who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. Well, you know, over the last couple of years, several factors have put the crunch on warehouse and other material handling operations. The, the pandemic both reduced the available workforce while at the same time kicking things like online sales into high gear. And warehouse operations in many sector, sectors either grew or they had to handle their same volume but with fewer employees. Now, what that did was cause many companies to take uh, a, a look or maybe another look at automated guided vehicles, which have been around for a long time. So they looked at them and then very often then they dismissed them. They dismissed them as being too expensive. Uh, too expensive on several uh, fronts. Uh, too expensive upfront, you know, thinking they're too expensive to buy, uh, too expensive to install, too expensive to maintain. But that doesn't really have to be the case as we're going to see. A cost-effective AGV solution can be available to even smaller operations if they have a better understanding of what it is they need and kind of what's out there and what the technology is like today and, and kind of what their options are for them. So with us today is Mike Kotzian, Managing Director of Kivnon USA, which is an AGV manufacturer. Hi, Mike. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Dirk. Really happy to be here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Hey, no sweat. So uh, first, just briefly, when you go looking for automated guided vehicles, AGVs, you also come across terms like AMRs and AGCs. Just clarify, is there a difference between, between these or is that just other words for the same thing? It's a really good question, and I've heard this like debated by a lot of different people. And I, I, my joke is that there's no governor of the the automated guided vehicle or AMR world, right? There's 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 no <laughs> there's no governor setting rules. There, I mean, the way I kind of look at it is there's definitely commonalities, components, how they function, but they're, they're really sort of seg segmented. You'll see a lot of AGVs that are you know. Uh, fork style AGVs or Tugger AGVs, larger units. The term AGC a lot of times is applied to units. A lot like, uh, I feel like ours kind of fall under that kind of realm of it's an automated guided cart. So they're, they're kind of smaller, function the same. And then AMR is really is newer, right? Newer technology, you know, really more focused on e-commerce. E and, and, and there are some different rules that, that from a safety standpoint of how they operation. So there are some, and there's overlap. There is, you know, differentiation between the, the different kind of vehicles, and but there is some overlap for sure. Okay, um, so for for people who aren't really familiar with this, you guys have a have a great video that I wanted to show, and and this kind of shows that I think the basic operation of of uh, I guess an AGC, and um, and maybe you can just talk us through a little bit. So I'm just going to switch over to this this video here, and maybe you can just tell us uh, tell us what we're gonna what we're looking at here. Yeah, so this, you know, for Kivnon, a lot of our units follow magnetic guided or magnetic tape. Um, and this is a really simple, cost effective, you know, navigation technology. There's a lot of other navigation technologies out there, but AGCs, automated guided carts, there is some commonality of, of using this type of navigation. So, um, so basically, you, it just follows you lay this tape down on the floor, which is as simple as just sticking tape on the floor and the cart just follows along the tape. Exactly, and I mean, it's easy to change, it's easy to, 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 to make modifications, it's, um, you know, if something gets damaged or whatever, it's easy to repair. Okay, and then we see in this case, uh, now the cart comes up to uh, some sort of a, a cart on, on the shop floor, and then it, it locks into it and starts tugging it. Now, is that, is that interface, the, 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 the how the how the AG, AGC connects to that cart. Are these like standard carts and kind of across industry and this is how AGC would normally connect to a cart? Or is that adapter something unique to Kivnon that you mount or what, what's the deal on that? Yeah, so base, the basic function is somewhat universal for AGCs where they call it sort of a mouse style AGC or a tunnel under AGC because the AGV actually kind of goes underneath the, 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 cop, the dolly or the cart. The, the interface, the bracket and the hole where the pin, it's sort of a pin that comes up, that is, you know, that kind of needs to be specific to the, to the dimensions of the AGC that we have. Um, so you kind of can see the lighter silver kind of interface 
bracketry underneath. The upper structure is, you know, it, it can be millions of different things. I mean, the, the, we're really strong in automotive, so you'll see that upper structure taking sequence headliners to the line or, you know, um, exhaust or axles or different things. So that upper structure gives you the flexibility to, you know, kind of make the, the cart hold whatever you need to hold. Okay. And then what are we looking at now? Yeah, so the, the AGC kind of follows that magnetic guided tape. That's the magnetic tape for the navigation. And then to give it simple commands, we use RFID tags. And, and you see the guy there kind of place the RFID tag. There is a, an app, it's called FlexTag, that you can have on an Android phone to be able to read and write those, those uh, RFID tags. Um, and they're simple. I don't know if you maybe could see on a screen, but it's sort of like telling it to stop or, or go or um, turn right or do, do some basic things, maybe change a laser scan or things like that. And that's the, the cart. The cart knows to do that. When it hits that RFID, the cart knows to do those things. Correct. Correct. Okay, got it. Okay. And this is kind of a simpler solution too. And I always kind of, you know, caution people against overthinking um, some AGV solutions. This is more of a, a more basic push button type, you know, simple entry level type automation here for AGCs. So is this like a charging station I'm looking at now or? Yep. So this is really common to be able to charge in loop, you know, um, it's typically on a column or a wall and then in the concrete and then plates on the floor that we drive and spring loaded and gauge to. And it, it could be off to the side or it can be actually why it stopped. Maybe it takes 15 minutes for you to load up the dolly. That's a perfect time to let the vehicle charge because it's just sitting there. Okay. And so, so tell me again about the, the controls on, you said this is a simpler way. I'm, I'm not sure I, I followed what you meant there. Yeah. So, I mean, AGCs, AGVs systems can be as simple as, you know, A to B, two vehicles, you know, on a simple loop with a push button, you know, I drop an empty, I drop a full, let's say, drive to the right, pick up an empty and come back. And that's all they do. They also can be very complex in terms of, you know, even for us, we have some 50 unit, 100 unit buffer systems for like a seating, automotive seating, where it's, we're moving in and out of a buffer and sequencing and it's, you know, we're connected to the upper level system. So that's, you know, if you're connected to an MES or WMS and you're starting to manage a lot of inventory locations or manage SKUs, that's where, you know, automated systems are still good, but I mean, that's where it can get more complicated. Where this is really just a kind of a push button loop, right? You saw the, the push buttons on the column and with yeah. the simple RFID tags, you can kind of hit route one, route two, route three. Now, this is interesting because this is, this, I mean, uh, you know, question that comes up is you got AG, you got these, these people, these, these, these devices that don't have operators uh, running them, they're, they're automated. Uh, what happens if somebody happens to get in front of them? And this kind of shows, I think, the, the safety aspect of it, right? Yeah, for sure. So this one that we show, you see the yellow on each end of the actual unit. This is a bi-directional unit, so it can go both directions. So there is a laser scan around the front and the back, or you know, actually both ends, if you will. And there's typically sort of a slowdown zone and a stop zone, and it kind of shows, you know, a lot of times you'll see them kind of queued up like that. Well, actually, you, you can use the laser scanner to kind of queue a few in, in a row. They'll see each other or they'll see a person. So, yeah. And OK, and then we just we move on to the move on to the next cart. Um, so I'm do you, you kind of you kind of alluded to this a, a second ago that there are simpler systems and there's more complex systems. And I, I think, you know, you even mentioned the word, you, I think you said people tend to overthink what they want from an AGV. Do, do people kind of get bogged down in the, in the details and then just give up and just going, this is going to be too complex, it's going to be too expensive? Yeah, I mean, I've been doing AGVs for 24 years now. So I've seen, I've seen it where, let's say somebody maybe at a corporate level gives sort of a mandate to plant managers or an engineering group. Hey, we need, a I saw AGVs somewhere, or we need AGVs. And then they put a committee together to, to go see all the different vendors and they put together a full, you know, a pilot and a checklist and all that. And that's, that's okay. I mean, you can start with a system like ours that's, like I said, these are, these are simpler units, AGCs. When I say AGC, in general, that term, these, these units are simpler than some of the automated guided vehicles that are larger and the systems that are larger. 
you can put a really sort of, like I said, a back and forth, like you saw the vehicle at the end, it sort of pulled up, it dropped one off, tunneled under the next one and took it away. That two vehicle, three vehicle loop with like, let's say, taking a full move into the empty and bringing it back to get loaded and just doing a loop. That's a really simple, easy solution and a fairly low cost solution to put in. So, I mean, I mean, I know there's a lot of variables in here and I don't want to put you on the spot, but maybe just a little bit. So when we say <laughs> low right. cost, I mean, I know that you can get AGV systems that are, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, maybe, maybe uh, the, the, uh, the robotic ones, uh, uh, you know, AMRs, I think you called them or something like that. Um, I mean, so a, a, a simple system, maybe like what we just saw, a couple carts, like you said, it's just shuttling things back and forth. Kind of what is a reasonable price range for something like that? Yeah, so I, I mean, we have a couple of, we've, I think we've got two installations going in here in the next month or so that are just two vehicle sim systems that are kind of that back and forth. And they're right around the hundred grand mark. I mean, it, it, you know, for two vehicle system. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on the unit, right? And things like that or whatever, but I mean, a hundred grand, you know, in today's, you know, wages, wage rate. I mean, there's a pretty good payback on, on an automated system for a hundred grand. So, right. And this is with, with just in, 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 this is what a, a system where you just like we showed in this one, lay the tape down on the floor. Yep. Lay the tape, some RFID tags, maybe a simple, you know, like I'm thinking of the one we have, it's a two vehicle system in a loop. And it's sort of, it, it is sort of that I drop a full, I move to the empty and I bring it back and this is where they're loading it. And then I, I drop the full, I grab the empty and bring it back. Two vehicles in a system, automatic charging, can run 24 seven, right? It, I mean, it's a fully automated turnkey system at $100,000. Now, of course you can get bigger units and more complex with the, you know, the software end of it and things like that. And that can go up. But for me, that's a fairly low cost entry level type system into automation. So, if somebody's interested in, a, in, in, in this kind of system, what are the questions that they should, they should ask? Or, or I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm thinking from two perspectives. One is, what should they look at in their own facility to even make the decision whether an AGV makes sense for them? And if they do think it does, what are the questions they should be asking when they go out to look at a vendor? Yeah. That's good because so if, and we've kind of, co I've coached customers over the years, you know, as, as they're getting into this of looking for, you know, roadblocks or different things, even internally for them, you know, trying to implement an AGV system. And, and, and one of the easiest things sort of is to look for a repetitive, consistent operation if you have a consistent load too, right? Um, and, and that could change, like we, we just looked at dollies and the upper structure of the load could be whatever you want, as long as the dollar is the same. But, you know, we're, we're typically looking for repetitive operations within your, let's say, manufacturing or distribution plant um, with a consistent load. Uh, and that can be made consistent with a dolly, like we said. The other thing, you know, there's a couple other, there's from a, let's say from a finance standpoint, from a payback, like if you're only running one shift and you're in a really low wage rate area, and you have, you know, some kind of one or two year strict ROI requirements, that's going to be difficult. I mean, if you're running in a high wage area and you're two shifts or three shifts and running five, six, seven days a week, that's where you can really get a, a, a much simpler payback. Um, and then the other thing, once I, I always kind of, kind of coach customers too, as they're getting into this, I, I always recommend that they spend a little bit of time with their own internal IT people to kind of let them at least know that they're looking at this because that can be <laughs> that can be a roadblock. You know, as somebody, let's say, you know, you're trying to sell a system, but also as a person trying to implement it, you could spend nine months trying to do a pilot and vet all these vendors. And then IT tells you you're doing something wrong or they didn't like being involved. So I always tell them to get IT involved. The other is safety. So safety needs to be kind of on board and understand, you know, that you're, you're looking at implementing an AGV system. Okay. Um, so what is the, the market looking like for AGVs? I mean, my, my thought was that you guys, you know, uh, th there's several, several players, obviously in, uh, in the AGV market is, is, is the, have you guys seen an increase in sales, uh, since the pandemic and kind of like, I, I kind of teased there at the, at the very beginning, um, you know, fewer workers, uh, but still, in many cases, the same demand on materials handling. 
Is that been a boon for you guys? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, we're, you know, there's supply chain issues, right? There's the, you know, the labor force right now, people just, you know, trying to hire. Um, so for sure. And I mean, that's why we're, and I, you know, we just had Modex, we had a big trade show, you know, last week in Atlanta. So there's a lot of vendors and different people. And I, and I know a lot of people in the industry, everybody's facing a lot of the same challenges, whether it's with their own workforce or with their supply chain and things like this. So, I mean, this is where we've kind of pushed our focus a little bit. And as we're talking is there's simpler, quick and easy, you know, solutions to put in. I mean, uh, you know, I've been involved in some multi-million dollar AGV systems over the years that take a lot of planning and take a long time to implement and things like that and still viable, still good. But there's also some of these, you know, some of these kind of low hanging fruit that are really easy to put in. And, you know, we could put in in six months, you know, we, we could put a, you know, a two vehicle, hundred thousand dollar system in, take an order now and have it to you before the end of the year running turnkey. Right. So. You know, uh, I want to talk a little bit about about infrastructure. So, I mean, we talked, uh, you know, about it basically in terms of just guiding the vehicle, you just put tape down, that sort of thing. Are there any other major changes that in a simple system you would have to do to support uh, an AGV? So with the magnetic tape, I mean, uh, a lot of customers sometimes will lay out the initial plan and run it for six months or a year to, you know, to, to get to, let's say, where they feel pretty comfortable with it. The only thing I would say, if there's a lot of high traffic, like, I mean, AGV systems in general, whether you're following a magnetic tape or lasers or vision or whatever, um, high traffic, whether it's by humans, um, it's not great to have within the, the route. So, I mean, we do have customers that'll sort of reroute an aisle or doorways or different things to accommodate the AGV system. And then um, the other would be fork truck traffic, you know, tugger traffic and, and tugger and fork truck traffic's the worst because if you have fork truck dragging the forks, dragging big steel containers, you know, you're ripping up RFID tags or other sure. tags, right? So that's where we have customers that may for six, we, you know, there's protective tape you can put down and the RFID tags have kind of a protective, if there's really high traffic intersections, a lot of times our customer will bury the magnetic tape in that section just to, to be safe. Okay. Um, well, uh, Mike, that was that, that was interesting. I mean, thanks thanks for kind of the rundown on that, and for actually that great video that you supplied that kind of takes us through the uh, that takes us through the the whole thing. Uh, you sent a couple other videos. Uh, there is a link for those of you who are watching. There's a link to a couple other videos underneath the player page down there that shows some other. Uh, uh, some other animations of some of the capabilities of, uh, of the Kivnon uh, systems for sure. Um, Mike, thanks for your time today. I appreciate it. Really appreciate being here. Thanks, Dirk. Hey, no sweat. And that is it for uh, today's QDL. Thanks to all of you for joining us. If, uh, if you have any other topics you'd like us to uh, touch on on the show or any guests you'd like us to bring on, just let us know by sending us an email at qdl at qualitydigest.com and we will do our best. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us. So long.